Hi, and welcome to another Witch Doctor's How To. Today we're going to show you how to install the Lloyd's Fuel Tuner. This is a real easy installation, increases horsepower, uh, improves your throttle, throttle response. Uh, they have two different ones for the 1999 to 2007 model victories and also from the 2008 and up victories. And what you get, you get your controller, wiring harness, a couple zip ties to hold everything out of the way. So this is one of those ones that you can tune yourself with the up and down buttons, the different mode switch. So we won't get into what you have to do to tune it, we're just going to get into how to show you how to install it. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing we need to do is we need to gain access to the air filter and the fuel control underneath the gas tank. So what you got to do, the first thing, is you're going to take off both side panels. These are real easy to do, just grab them, pull them off. I'm sure most of you guys already know how to do that. Set them aside. I'm going to use a 6 millimeter Allen wrench for the seat. There's a bolt here, one on each side. Just loosen those up. Seat only takes you a couple minutes to get off. It's real easy. Okay, get the bolts out, lift the seat up and forward, and it comes right off. And that's all there is to taking the seat off. The next thing you're going to want to do, so if you look here, you got two bolts to take the gas tank off. Also a ground bolt. There's two vacuums here. You need to loosen those vacuums. Just pull them off, separate them, and back behind your cheese wedge, Pull the cheese wedge off. You have your main fuel line right here. There's a clip back in there, a green clip. And if you watch some of our other videos, it shows you how to get that off. You want to just squeeze that green clip together and take the fuel tank off. I'll show you here in a minute. All right, the first thing you're going to want to do is you want to disconnect the main fuel line. A lot of guys uh, you'll hear talking about how they broke the fuel nipple off the gas tank. That's up underneath, up under here, up under the gas tank. We're not even going to mess with that. We're going to take it off here. If you do what I say here, you won't break the fuel nipple. So, it's a little bit hard to see, but down inside there, there is a green clip that holds the fuel line. Right there. So what you want to do is you want to squeeze that clip together on both sides. Uh, sometimes it's a little bit of a pain to do. Um, but it'll come off. Once you squeeze it together, you'll kind of hear it click and then you can pull the gas line off. The other thing you want to do for safety is just do this when the motor's not hot. You don't want to do a hot motor because a little bit of gas is going to drip out of there. So what you want to do is put a rag under there. Let's get an old rag and just put it so that you catch the gas. It's not going to be a ton. You know, it's not going to come spraying out of there, but it is going to come out of there. So. What you want to do is just squeeze that clip together and you'll hear it click. Sometimes it's hard to get your hands in there. And there you go. Just pull it and it comes right off. So no big deal. That's the first step. Leave the rag in there just in case it's, it's dripping because it will drip a little bit. Just let it drip into the rag. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the gas tank. Like I said earlier, you got bolt here, bolt here, the two vacuum hoses, and the uh, little ground wire. Same bolt you use for the seat, so you don't need anything any different. You now loosen these two bolts up, take them off. This is definitely one of those things, um, if you can run the gas tank down to a little bit of fuel or no fuel, it's a lot lighter. You can, you know, easier to maneuver around. Um, have a buddy help you lift it off. Um, if you go careful, uh, you won't break that fuel nipple, like I said, that everybody breaks off. You set the bolts aside, and you want to watch that on the bolts, you have a rubber 
grommet on each side. So there's one on the outside, there's also ones on the inside. So when you lift up the gas tank, you want to watch you don't lose those. Just disconnect your vacuum hoses, just pull them apart. Lift up the tank a little bit, have a buddy help you hold it, and reach in there and pull these grommets out, because if not, you're going to lose them on the floor. So once you do that, you just basically lift up the tank and pull, pull it back. Watch that fuel line dripping. There's also a wiring harness under here. Just pull the little tab, disconnect that, and you're all set. Just take the gas tank and set it aside. Okay, now that you got the gas tank and everything out of the way, we're going to plug the fuel tuner into the fuel injection wires. Now, the one thing I want to say first is make sure you're very patient because this is an absolute pain in the ass if you have never done it before. So, be patient, but here's what we're trying to do. The, the front fuel injector wire is behind the cylinder. It's in here, right where I'm pointing. You can see that red clip. Try to zoom in a little bit for you. That red clip right there, that's the fuel injector. So what you need to do, that red clip is like a safety clip. You need to pull that clip up before you can do anything. And this is where like a really tiny baby screwdriver really comes in handy. So you want to just kind of hook that red clip and pull it up out of the way. I don't know if you can see there, but that's how it's out of the way. The next thing you want to do is right underneath it, right here, this black tab, and you have to be really careful that you don't break this stuff because it's just plastic. You want to make sure you don't break it or pull the wires apart. You want to take that tab and you want to push in on the black part, and you'll feel it click. When you feel it click, I just kind of use the screwdriver and kind of pull up a little bit. And you see how it popped right off? That's the injector harness right here. This is where you're going to pl plug the harness in. You're going to put the yellow wire on the harness on the Lloyd's setup. And what you can see right here on the Lloyd setup, you have a yellow wire and you have a green wire on the harness. The yellow wire goes to the front cylinder. So I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so the rear cylinder injector is kind of the same thing. I'll back up here so you can get an idea. Here's your throttle body or your throttle cables. So it'll give you an idea where you're at. There's the red harness connector. Do the same thing. You want to pull up with a screwdriver on that. And this one is just about as big a pain, but push in. You'll feel it click and then you can pull it off. This one you actually have a little bit more room to get your hand in there and work, okay? So I'll try to show you here with this thing off what, what you're actually working on. But right there is the red tab, okay? This is the red tab now that you can see it a little bit better. This right here is the black part that you have to push in on, right there. Push in on that, like I say, you'll feel it click. It's a definite thing you can feel. Once you feel it click, then you can just lift it right off. Okay, I'll shot, try to show you how to do this. It's a little bit hard to see with the camera, but you have the, the harness that you just took off, the connector you just took off, like I said earlier, that's gonna plug into the yellow side of the Lloyd's controller. So what you want to do, it's real simple, just the same thing. It's kind of hard to get your hands in there. There, you'll hear, I don't know if you could hear that click, but it snaps in. The other end of the harness here, that's gonna plug into the fuel injector itself. So all you're doing is really putting this kind of in between. So make sure you get it, the connector going the right way. Snap it on, again, you can hear it click. And again, they give you that red clip 
push that, make sure you push that red clip on there. Now you're going to want to route the wires kind of along through here and you just got to kind of do it the best you can to run the wire behind. You're going to hook the other connector onto the other injector back in there and it's easier to do it from this side. Kind of fish everything through and I found that installing it all on this side is easier. Uh, the wires match up a lot better. But it's definitely run, run the wires first before you hook everything up so you can kind of see where everything has to go. Do like a trial fit. And again, uh, getting that injector wire from the other side is pretty much a pain. Try to show you where it's at here. It's actually hidden kind of down in here. You can see it with a flashlight. It's down in there. That's going to be your green wire. You can see right there your green connector right there is going to go onto there. So you're going to just do the same thing, kind of push it on. You can kind of reach it from the other side to help hold it when you push it on. Make it a little bit easier. Again, listen for the click. That way you know it's in there. And then this end um, is going to go on the injector. So what you want to kind of do is stick it through as far as you can and then go on the other side of the bike, walk over to the other side of the bike and plug it into the injector. And the one tip when you want to know which way the connector goes, the red side basically faces out towards you so you can push that little safety clip down. So once that's all put on, you're going to kind of just run this along the frame here. You can kind of tuck it in, just kind of get it out of the way for the most part. You don't want it anywhere in the area of where the gas tank can hit. So you're just going to kind of want to run it like that. And then uh, with the zip ties that they give you, just kind of zip tie it up out of the way. Doesn't really matter where you do it, just wherever your wire's kind of sagging a little bit, kind of do it to hold it up out of the way. So the next step is going to be to put the gas tank back on. And again, make sure when you're putting the gas tank back on, uh, you know, all the stuff's out of the way, Try kind of trial fit it and make sure. So we'll put the gas tank on and we'll be right back. Okay, so we're ready to put the gas tank back on. So have you get a, somebody to give you a hand. On the front, you're just gonna slide it down on those rubber pegs, those little rubber mounts on the frame. Watch you don't bend your fuel line. You know, make sure you get that out of the way. Now, while you still got it up in the air, plug your fuel injector or plug the wiring harness in. Kind of tuck that down out of the way. Make sure your vacuums are out of the way. Now, one thing you're going to do is put your rubber, uh, your rubber grommets back in before you set it down. Don't forget that. Pull all your wires out of the way. And then basically the tank will just set right back down on. Should go right on without any problems. And take your bolts, put your bolts back in. Snug them up. Again, don't crank them, don't burn them down. 
you're going to plug your fuel injection, your fuel hose back on. Tuck your line up out of the way, make sure it's not pinched off. Just push it on, snap it on. You'll hear it snap. You might get a little bit of gas, take your rag out of there. Plug your vacuums, hoses back together, or not back um, together there. Make sure you snap them together. Take your ground wire, put your ground wire back on. Now on this one we have the, the Lloyd's fuel controller, so we're also going to put the ground wire for that in the same spot. You know, just tighten that bolt up. When you get down close to the wires, you want to hold the wires so they don't spin. You, if you let them spin, you can twist the terminals off. So just get a hold of the wires here and keep them from spinning when you tighten that up. And that's basically it. Everything's connected up there. Make sure your fuel line's on. Now, the one thing you can do is to check if your fuel system leaks is just turn the bike on. And then all you have to do is turn the kill switch on. You'll hear the fuel pump turn on, and that'll pressure test the fuel for you that you don't have any leaks. You want to do that before you start the bike up so you don't risk you know, catching something on fire with gas spraying out. So just do that. Turn the kill switch on. Fuel pump will turn on, uh, and make sure you don't have any leaks. Next thing you're going to do is just put the seat back on and the side panels, and you'll be all done. Okay, now it's time to mount the, the uh, controller box on the, the fuel tuner. What you want to do is you want to just kind of clean a spot off on the, under the side panel here. Just clean that off real good. In the kit, you get uh, Velcro pads, so you want to just peel the backing off of that. Stick it on the back of the controller. Now there's a screw and stuff on there. You don't want to block any of that stuff off. So make sure you just kind of put it off to the side here. Peel the backing off the other part and just kind of get that. And like I said before, kind of trial fit this stuff first so you know what's what, but just kind of stick that on velcro wise there. Take your last zip tie and just kind of wrap it around there. Now the one thing that I don't show you on this bike um, you have to disconnect the O2 sensors so you can do that one of two ways. You can either unscrew them and put in a plug, or you can simply just disconnect the wire. It's a one wire connector, um, so just disconnect the wire and kind of tie it back out of the way so it's not hanging, but you need to disconnect them. On this bikes, um, we actually have a custom exhaust on here and he doesn't use oxygen sensors, so that's why I can't show you, but you do need to disconnect them. So now that you have this mounted, Everything's tied up out of the way. Everything should be fine. Gas okay, I'm just going to kind of show you a quick rundown of how this controller works. I'm not going to tell you the tune-ups or anything like that. You know, that you have to do. But basically, when you turn your key on, turn your kill switch on, get it to power up, you'll see the green and red light start to flash. When you read the instructions, it tells you about the yellow, uh, the red, blue, the different settings that you have. What you do is you push the mode button, which is the middle button. And you'll see it change. It's in the yellow setting now. Click it again. It's in the green-blue setting. Click it again. Red-blue setting. So that's what they're talking about. So once you get it in whatever mode you want, that's when you push the, the negative or the positive, the plus or the minus. That's when you start to adjust it from there. But I just wanted to give you the rundown of what, what the colors mean when they're talking. That's the yellow mode, the red, uh, green-blue, yellow-blue red blue that's what that means so that's all so when you shut the bike off I'll shut it off now it takes a second for the for the unit to power down so it's still blinking and then it'll eventually shut off here there it goes it shut off so that's basically what they're talking about there okay, everything should be fine gas tanks on you're gonna put your seat on you're gonna put your side panels on and then you are all set so with that being said we're done with this video thanks for watching